Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am starting the leukemia series for you all. In this video, I will be talking about leukemia, types of leukemia, and acute lymphoblastic leukemia in detail. So let's get started. Leukemia is a broad term for cancer of the blood cells. The type of leukemia depends on the type of blood cell that becomes cancerous. It could be of lymphoid or myeloid origin. And depending upon the growth, quick or slow, it is also classified as acute or chronic. The lymphocytic or lymphoblastic leukemias are the in leukemias which involve the bone marrow cells that become lymphocytes. Whereas myeloidinous or myeloid leukemias are the leukemias which involve the marrow cells that create RBCs, platelets and WBCs other than lymphocytes. There are four types of leukemias. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia, acute myelogenous leukemia, chronic myelogenous leukemia, and chronic lymphocytic leukemia. The acute leukemias have sudden onset and it needs prompt treatment. According to the WHO classification, more than 20% blast should be present in the bone marrow to be classified as acute leukemia. However, according to the French American British classification, there should be more than 30% blast in the bone marrow to be classified as acute leukemia. In today's video, I will be talking about acute lymphoblastic leukemia, also known as ALL commonly in detail. ALL is a highly aggressive neoplasm of precursor lymphoid cells or lymphoblasts. There are mainly two subtypes, B lymphoblastic leukemia or lymphoma and T lymphoblastic leukemia or lymphoma. ALL is characterized by neoplastic proliferation of clonal precursor B cells or T cells that typically have blastic cytomorphology. According to the FAB classification, there are three subtypes of acute lymphoblastic leukemia. L1, L2 and L3. L1 lymphoblastic leukemia commonly occurs in childhood and in this the blast cytomorphology is small uniform cells with regular nuclei, coarse chromatin, inconspicuous nuclei and scant cytoplasm. The L2 subtype of ALL occurs mainly in adolescents or adults and in this, the blasts are large heterogeneous cell population with irregular or clefted nuclei and occasional nucleoli. The cytoplasm is mild to moderate in amount. The L3 subtype occurs mainly in older age group and in this, the blast population is a homogeneous cell population which are large cells with regular nuclei, fine chromatin and 1 to 2 nucleoli. The cytoplasm is moderate to abundant with vacuolation. Coming to the etiology of ALL, the exact etiology is unknown. It occurs mainly due to genetic mutations which cause uncontrolled proliferation of blast cells. There are many risk factors associated with ALL which include genetic conditions such as Down syndrome, neurofibromatosis, ataxia, telangiectasia, etc., previous radiation exposure, exposure to chemicals like benzene, and previous infection by HTLV-1 or Epstein-Barr virus. Symptoms and signs of acute lymphoblastic leukemia. The common symptoms include fever, fatigue, bone or joint pain, bleeding, anorexia, pale skin, shortness of breath. The patient could also present with widespread lymphadenopathy, hepatosplenomegaly and some patients show testicular enlargement. Coming to the diagnostic workup of ALL. For the lab diagnosis, complete blood counts are done which shows increased total leukocyte count, low hemoglobin and low platelet counts. The peripheral blood smear may show presence of lymphoblast. The bone marrow aspirate is hypercellular and show increased number of lymphoblasts which are positive on staining with periodic acid shift stain. Low cytometry can be done 
to detect specific immunophenotypic markers such as CD3, CD5 or CD7 for lymphoid cells of T cell origin and CD19, CD20 and CD22 for lymphoid cells of B cell origin. This is essential for subclassifying AL. Fish or fluorescent in situ hybridization technique is used for cytological evaluation. For example, detection of Philadelphia chromosome or translocation 9 is to 22, which is seen in cases of ALL. Coming to the prognostic markers, there are certain markers which are having good prognosis and there are certain cytogenetic markers which are having bad prognosis. For example, translocation 9 is to 22, translocation 4 is to 11 and translocation 8 is to 14 is associated with poor prognosis. However, deletion 9q and hyperdiploidy is associated with better prognosis. Treatment of acute lymphoblastic leukemia the main treatment for ALL is chemotherapy. A combination of anti-cancer drugs are used. The most commonly used chemo drugs include vincristine, donorubicine, citrobine, elasparginase, 6-mercaptopurin, methotrexate, cyclophosphamide, ridonosone, dexamethasone, etc. This chemo treatment is in of ALL is typically divided into three phases, induction, consolidation and maintenance phase. The induction phase has a goal to kill as many as leukemia cells possible in the blood and bone marrow and to restore the blood counts to normal. It's a short and intensive phase and usually lasts about a month. The consolidation phase goal is to completely get rid of any remaining leukemic cells from the body which were not detected in the blood or bone marrow test. This typically lasts for a few months. The maintenance phase, the goal is to keep the cancer cells from coming back or regrowing. It's a less intensive phase and typically lasts for about two years. Other treatment options depending on the subtype of ALL include targeted cancer drug therapy, immunotherapy, radiation therapy and stem cell or bone marrow transplant. I hope you all understood today's lecture where keep looking out for the leukemia series as you all know that leukemia is a very very important topic for exam purposes. Also I would like to remind you all to attempt the MCQs posted in the community section of my YouTube channel and do subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are liking these videos. Thank you.